Hi everyone, welcome to Let's Celebrate TV Live. I'm your host, Peter Lee. Now, of course, I don't do this on my own, so with me, as always, is my cameraman, director, producer, IT guy, uh, all-in-all general good egg, and he's also my husband, Phil Gortimer. And good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you're watching us from. Today we interesting. Also with us today, we have a little bit of a live studio audience. We have our son and grill master here, Kevin Gordimer. So normally we open with a cocktail, but we're really celebrating today. Uh, as you know, I've been doing this uh, Carla Hall contest called Favorite Chef, and I have made it to the quarterfinals. So we are celebrating that, and I'm going to open our little favorite uh, sparkling wine here, La Marca. The other thing that we are celebrating is this week, I got a phone call out of the blue on Monday from the producers of MasterChef, which is Gordon Ramsay's show. And they saw how well I'm doing in this favorite chef contest and they checked out our channel and they invited me to audition, which I did. So I, I should find out uh, probably in the next month or so if I am gonna be competing on season 14, which is, uh, I'm still kind of geeking out that they reached out to me and said, hey, you've got something. So we're going to have a little bit bubbly. Yes, Hank, absolutely. Voting begins again tomorrow, uh, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, which is 1 p.m. here. I don't know about other parts of the world, but it will tell you if you can vote. And it doesn't quite work there. That's okay, dear. It doesn't matter. Just keep it on the front. So if we have a little bit of camera changes today, I spent two days redesigning our studio and putting cameras in the ceiling. So we have a little bit of mm, interesting issues. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, there's going to be lots of... Where do you want me to put this now? What button am I supposed to press? Yeah. You know, we can't leave anything alone. Heaven forbid. It's not fun that way. All right. Kevin, come get this. Do you want to stay there, dear, or you want to come and... Uh, no, I need to stay here. Okay. I got to deliver to you. Yes, you do. It's all right. I got free books. And we have a congratulations exactly. from Martha. Thank you, Martha. Okay. So, cheers to all that. Can you Hold put yourself on, on camera? Yeah, I'm trying. There you are. Cheers. Hmm. Well, my buttons are all screwed up That's over here. That's good stuff. You poor bear. Yeah, I can figure it out. It's okay. Our viewers will be patient with us. All right, we'll put this out of the way. Is there anything you need to talk about before I start, or may I just... No, nope. let me just test a button it. here first. Okay. okay. All right. So lower thirds work. Very good. Yes. Always a good thing. <sighs> Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Hank has got our temperature check in. Let's, let's see how it is in the... Uh, looking towards 112 at mid-afternoon. But it's a dry heat of 12% as the monsoons have not fully arrived. And okay, I just heard that, is, <sighs> that you guys are at a 10-day streak of 110 or above. Terrifying. Terrifying. Am I missed right now? Sure. There's lots of chicken, and it's all getting cold and warm. I, I know. I know. So, yeah, what's for dinner? Chicken. That's what it's all about today. Well, you've probably heard the phrase, there's a chicken in every pot. And you probably think that some former president said that. You may not remember which one. You may think it was FDR, but that's not correct. Actually, uh, King Henry IV of France who was a monarch from the late 1500s into the early 1600s, originated that quote, and he said, I want there to be no peasant in my realm so poor that he will not have a chicken in his pot every Sunday. And that was then later associated with Herbert Hoover uh, in a 1928 ad campaign that uh, one of his supporting groups placed. And so everyone thinks that some American president, maybe people think it is Hoover, uh, but he never said that. He just went along with the uh, advertising for it. So that's what it is all about today, a chicken in every pot. 
So let's talk about chicken and common types, common sizes, etc. I know you all buy chicken, you go to the grocery store, the butcher, and you see big ones and little ones and all kinds of names. So most commonly, we have here a roaster, right? Normal chicky, feed a family, make soup, make stock. Sometimes you'll see ones that are uh, maybe a little smaller or around the same size, but they'll say broiler or fryer. And, excuse me, the difference is that, mm, Champagne burps. <laughs> uh, the roaster and broiler are just slightly older. This is a fully grown but younger chicken, and a, a broiler roaster would be a little older. Or at least that's what I've been told. Then we have things, you see here some of these other things, like we have a capon. What's a capon? And maybe you've seen them in, in the grocery stores. They're not very common, but occasionally you'll see one, especially around the holidays in some of the higher end grocery stores too. But they're very, very expensive. And all it is is a male chicken, a rooster, that was altered. Um, maybe had a little gender reassignment. And the whole idea is to make him uh, fatten up easily and become very tender and flavorful. So I, I looked at capons in Wegmans the other day and they were like $65. And it's like, mm, no, I'm not gonna buy one of those. Not just for a chicky. But it's the same type of chicken as this is. It's not a special breed or anything. It just happens to be a boy who got lucky. And Kelly, when we see a real batter dipped, deep fried chicken episode? Well, maybe this year. We don't make fried foods very often, uh, but it, it's on the bucket list. If you fry it, I'll eat it. I know that, Kev. You... <laughs> well, we fry, but we typically don't have a deep fry. Correct. We pan fry and finish in right. the oven. And I don't tend to do batter dipped. I tend to do just flour dredge or something like that. But, you know, it, it's something to, to look into. Then we have, so we have broilers and fryers and oven stuff and roasters and... and what about a game hen? So this is a game hen. You can see the difference in their sizes. A little chicky, a big chicky. Now, I'll show you. Except the little chicky costs four times the price. Well, yeah, they often come in packs of two, and they'll say whole Cornish hen, or sometimes rock Cornish hen, or Cornish game hen. So people think that, especially when it says game hen, that it's something different and gamey and some wild little bird like a pheasant or something. It's really just a very young small chicken. But they're perfectly delicious. It's just funny how that marketing makes you think, oh, that's going to be something exotic. But these are great. We serve these uh, for company a lot when we don't know what else to cook. It's like, hey, let's just do game hens. Well, and it's good portion control because, you know. It is. One hen one, per person. One, one bird per person. Or sometimes just a half a bird, depending on. Or split it on, in half and throw yep. it on the grill, and it's done in, mm -hmm. you know, an uh, amazing amount of time. Now, of course, then you can get all the other parts of the chicken separately. You know, you can get thighs and, and drumsticks and the leg thigh quarters and chicken breasts, the split breasts, the boneless, skinless ones. You can get a lot of the innards, the chicken livers. It's delicious. You can even get, at least in my supermarkets, I can get them. They call them chicken paws, and they're the feet. And if you know how to cook them, they're absolutely delicious. I know some of you are going, oh, chicken feet, that's gross. But no, they're, they're really unctuous and, and wonderful. So that's some common types of chicken that you'll see in the store. Now, I've talked about... Okay, Jerry says, I get tired of chicken, so I'm always excited to see a new recipe. Well, thank you, and I'm always looking for new recipes. We'll talk about some chicken recipes in a bit. I'm going to do some cooking today. Um, in fact, I should probably get this oil heating. And I'll turn it way down so it heats but doesn't burn and smoke up our house because we don't want to set off the smoke alarms in the middle of a live stream. It'd be funny. Yeah, well, it would be funny. What, Kevin? <laughs> we didn't think to unplug that. Unplug what? Oh, the smoke you can't you unplug can't. it. They're hardwired in. They're, they're, yeah. Yeah, that's why I don't do fog at Halloween, because it sets them off. Anyway, 
<laughs> as I was saying, you know, those are common types of chicken, chicken parts and things uh, that we do. Now, uh, we're gonna spatchcock a chicken today. That's a new term maybe. And what does that mean? We're gonna cut it and open it flat. Why do you do that? Because you can cook it more evenly that way, especially on the grill. But if you, even in the oven, if you want to do it a little faster, it's a great way to do it. So I'm gonna demonstrate spatchcocking a chicken. And if you do it cast iron, it's even better. That's true, that's very true. So let me uh, move my notes out of the way. Now, this is not the same as breaking down a whole bird. Um, we did a basic skills episode on that. I am a little out of practice, so I didn't want to do it on camera today, but I can do this for you. Uh, and we have so much other stuff to do. I didn't want to take 10 minutes trying to break down a bird, but we'll leave you, we'll, can we leave the, a link to that? I'll episode? put a link yeah. to that we'll episode. We'll put an episode, yeah. But it's a basic skill, and it's a good basic skill to have. It's often cheaper to buy a whole bird than just the parts that are already done for you. So here's my chicken. Breast, it's right side up, right? We're gonna flip it over. And along here is the backbone. This is the neck. So we're going to kitchen shears. We're gonna just follow along the backbone and cut right through the ribs and whatever else. And it helps if your shears are good and sharp. Hmm, they used to be sharp. They used to be sharp, exactly. <laughs> Not anymore. Time for some new shears, get them sharp, and there we go. So we've got one side, and now I'm gonna do it on the other. And I'm just going to go along the other side of it. And this side's going a little easier. Till this last bone, it's going LOL, no, there we go. Champagne and chicken, yay. Yep, all right, so let's put this aside. Now, I, I have this carcass here. What do you do? Right here, right here is called the keel bone. With chicken, with bigger birds, you just take a knife, and this is a softer bone, and you can just put a little, just a tiny little slice there. You don't need to press down. With smaller birds like game hens, you don't even need to do that. And you flip it over, you give it a push, and there's a little crack. But you see now, I have this flat chicken. And so this will all cook much more evenly, you see better this way, because it's all in one level. So it's much easier to deal with. Okay, so we're gonna move this, and dear, can you entertain them while I go wash my chicken hands? How about poultry shears? And we used to have poultry shears. We did, but um, the cost difference is huge, and we found that the better sh the better quality scissors are shears. just as good. Yep, 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 yep. All right, so can you entertain them while I? Uh, oh, okay. I'm supposed to entertain. So well, let's I'll do something. I mean, besides sitting there looking pretty and drinking my champagne. All right. So while we're doing that, let's. Let's talk about stuff here. Um, I guess I ought to put it on me. There we go. Uh, no, the, we're not doing a map today. We also will not be doing uh. our segment where we would go looking at um, other small YouTube channels, combinations. We have a lot to cover today. And also, I'm still waiting back for permission to do that. Um, plus, with everything going else with this contest and me spending three and a half days moving the cameras to the ceiling so we have no tripods on the floor anymore to trip over and we could use more of our studio and, and our basement together. Get so, to the bathroom now easier. We have a full bathroom down here and with all the tripods that were right here, it was like, okay. But I guess I'll be working hard tonight. All right, let's see what's happening. No, we're with watching our, RuPaul tonight. Let's see what's happening with our All Facebook right. people now, here. I know, I know. I'm not scrubbing and sanitizing this. I will. But for right now, here's what we're going to do. We're just going to flip it over. Oh, nice, clean size. My wife makes a roast chicken with dill that is unbelievably delicious. Okay, I'd like that recipe. We like dill. We eat dill a lot. Oh, Kevin, could you pop this in the fridge, please? Yep. Yeah. And my 
my tummy is grumbling because it's hungry. I haven't, so I was up at our campground this past week alone and uh, I kind of forgot to eat today. I was in such a rush to get out and get home in time because it's a three hour drive. Hmm. So I jumped up, I got in the car, I raced home and now I'm like, oh yeah, I didn't really eat. I'm gonna save this one from Hank till the end. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Now, some very common things that we see all the time. Everyone says, someone else mentioned fried chicken. <laughs> here, I have a nice big plate of fried chicken here. I'll put it right there. Um, you know, there we, you go. Have we, a piece right we now. We just got this uh, at the store today. Um, but yeah, you see these things all the time. And you think, okay, that's also a quick meal, but you can transform this into something else. You pick the meat off, you can do all kinds of things with them, but yes, they're delicious, just as is. And then of course, there's everyone's favorite thing, rotisserie chicken. Now this is just the breast, because my, my personal shopper grabbed the wrong one by mistake, but I'll forgive him. Personal shopper. Yes. You were having a good time at camp while I was slaving in a grocery store. Look, it's another title to your list of titles. Producer, director, cameraman, editor. Really? My champagne's almost empty, just saying. Uh -huh. Well, I I'm busy, dear. Our, our son is here talking about slaves, right? Also almost empty. Okay, well, you're younger than anyone else here. Well, go get the bottle. You know where it is. Yeah, it, it's like right there. <laughs> so we have a little chicky breast here. And this is the first thing we're going to cook. I'm going to make pulled barbecue chicken with this. How do you do that? This is one of those, I need a quick meal, and oh look, I have this rotisserie chicken. So we're gonna pull the skin off, and we're gonna pull some of this breast meat off. And you know, this is wonderful, it's fully cooked. It's at room temperature, so I'm not even burning my little fingers. I know some of you out there may be upset. Oh no, you're touching the chicken. You gotta touch your food. So we're just going to shred this by hand in our little bits as best as we can. Wouldn't a couple of forks work? Maybe you could do it with a couple of forks, but I'm doing it with my little thingies. That's all. You could do it with forks oh, this or one's funny. little shreddy things. Barbecue Bill, my kids will eat chicken nuggets, but getting them to eat real chicken is a challenge? Yeah, uh, aren't, aren't, like, Emily and Connor a little challenging with chicken? Some of our uh, grandkids. Emily. Emily. Emily, she does, she, she only likes chicken done one way. Beer can chicken is the only way she eats chicken. Oh, well. But then again, neither one of them eat mac and cheese. Yeah, well, that's true. Yeah, didn't I find that out? <laughs> But you know, when I was little, little kid, I didn't eat mac and cheese either. But that was before all the other nonsense with, you know, microwaves and stuff. All right, so we're gonna cut this up, shred it away. And how easy is this? You know, you could do this in minutes. And behind me, on my little burner back there, I think you can see over my shoulder, I have a little saucepan of my homemade barbecue sauce. Is that actually on back there? Uh, I just turned it off right before the live stream started okay. because it was boiling and boiling and I didn't want it to scorch. So all we really need to do, once I finish this, and try to just get to the tender parts. I see three sandwiches coming up. Yes, sir. Yay. If you're nice to me. Yeah, it's plenty hot. You see the steam coming off. So we're just going to put this in and let it poach just for a few moments. And it'll just soak up all this barbecue goodness. Now, I if you've ever seen our episode for Make Your Own Barbecue Sauce, um, if oh. not, you should watch it. Look who's here. Oh, Brad. Yay, I can't wait to see the kitchen studio. Camera angles are awesome. Thank you. I think we'll be seeing you next weekend. Anyway, this is a, I left this sauce rather chunky because it's going to go on a sandwich. So there's chunks of peppers and onions in it. I, I vote for more chicken in there. 
Just saying. Okay. Never let it be said that I don't do what my husband asks. Or I don't ever give him what he wants. All right, I'll keep I'm just going. deprived. What can I say? Yeah, yeah. But what else can you do with these rotisserie chickens? And I think uh, I was doing some reading and research on it, and, and it's almost limitless. And I, I often, I don't buy them very often. Earl, on all cooking shows, they push boneless thighs instead of breasts. Why? We can talk about that. Uh, the thighs are have more fat, and it's dark meat, so it stands up better to a longer cooking. They don't dry out as easily as the boneless, skinless breasts. They taste better. Yeah, because they have more fat and they're darker meat, so they just have more, uh, you know, collagen and enzymes or whatever oh, that taste better. Speaking of that, I see them right behind you, except they're regular ones, aren't they? Yep. Yes. Yeah, that was just there as a prop. But it's real. It is, it's real. I, I'll show them off, dear, just wait. One moment. Anyway, um, I, I don't buy these very often, and I sometimes put my nose up when I see a lot of the TV chefs who are like, you know, oh, and I made this whole dinner, this five-star dinner with a rotisserie chicken. It's like, uh. But then I started playing around with this, and I, I have to admit it's pretty yummy, and I started thinking about, well, it is a good shortcut because these really are just slow-cooked chickens. It's not like they are super, super processed which is my big objection to buying pre-made meals that they're usually so processed and full of salt and everything Those else. Those chickens break down and make a really good chicken salad, too. Yep, I know. And I was going to do a chicken salad, but then your dad pointed out, rightly so, you're doing a lot today. It's only an hour show. Mary, I love my game hens, but they are damn expensive. Yeah, they can be. They really can be. Wait, I got a trick about that. Hold on, let me get me on screen here. So we learned accidentally that in most of um, grocery stores, our shop right specifically too, they have them in the regular meat case. But if you go over to where the frozen turkeys are, they're over there frozen and they're usually less. So they're charging a premium price to then thaw them and have them fresh for you mm -hmm. when they're actually frozen to begin with. Um, to the order of about $2 a pound difference. Yep. So check where the frozen turkeys are first before you get the game hen, which you think is fresh. It's sort of like shrimp. It's everything is frozen, they just thaw it. Yep. Put down a bun. Little brioche bun. Hmm. With champagne, this should be interesting. Yes, I'll take a refill, Kevin. Okay, that looked funny. You saw a hand reach in. <laughs> yes, Kevin, you are allowed to be on camera. I will share the spotlight with you. Yes, but it's more fun to sneak. Yeah, well. Especially because Dad and I are going for a refill and you barely touched yours. I've been busy here. I'm working here. Okay. It's all right. Oh, so this here, is a good one. Here is some pulled barbecue chicken, super, super fast. Mike, do you have a favorite chicken restaurant? Um, no, I can't say that I do. So really the only chicken places around us are Popeyes or KFC. If I had to cho choose, I would choose Popeyes. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I guess Popeyes would be it then. I can't say like, oh, you have to go to so-and-so's chicken delight or, hmm. Oh, you guys want napkins too, I suppose. So you're all looking at well, me. Well, what do I, I here, that's all I need. You know, okay. Champagne and a. Mm, here. All right, let's give the little chicky a try on camera. Let me see if I can make a mess without getting all of the yeah. controls over here. Right. Oh, where's the point of that? Good thing the studio switcher is underneath the table. Mm-hmm. Uh, excuse me. No. That's pretty good. You after I, fight a cat for it. I kinda Yeah, our cat Maxwell is down I here. I kinda wish us. I had a camera over here because our yeah. one cat Maxwell is on the table eyeing Kevin's sandwich with I'm going to get some. Okay, you can go away now. Uh-huh. Mm. Have you not met Maxwell, Kevin? 
You're just getting the kitty version of F.U. Just saying. <laughs> so, you know, that's one thing you can easily do with a rotisserie chicken. And I was looking up other ideas, and which made me start thinking of ideas. So I think, dear, we're going to be having some adventures with rotisserie chicken in our near future. We may regret that, but there you have it. It's good. I think that if the bun was toasted, it'd be even better. Do you see what I have to put up with? Do you see this? Yeah. Sorry, dear. I'll have the house redesigned and a full kitchen installed down here for the next live stream so I could toast your buns under a salamander. Oh, this is good. From Avery, I ate so much chicken when I was first out on my own that I rarely make it, at least. Where'd Hold that on. go? There we go. At least it beats ramen noodles. Well, yeah. My parents were like that when they were first on their own. They ate a lot of chicken. And this was, you know, the early, early 50s. And so by the time I came along and was born, then we never or rarely had chicken because my dad didn't like it. And as he got older and they were able to go out to dinner more. Every time they would go out to dinner, he would order chicken. And it used to drive my mother up a wall. She's like, you won't eat chicken when I cook it at home. But you would go out and you, you uh, order <laughs> baked chicken. Yeah. Hank is uh, helping you by remote. OK. Yes, your oil is smoking. Yes, I saw. Yep, it is. Thank you. We're going to let that cool for a moment. Because I don't want a big whoosh. Yes, I was paying attention to that. But then, of course, I had to toast a bun and make a sandwich. Well, this one is, I uh, think I actually know who this person is. OK. Hold on. Kim, I am such a germaphobe that I obsess over chicken handling. I even wear gloves. Well, you know, gloves are going to protect you from spreading germs on your hands into the chicken. But it's not going to stop cross-contamination if you're touching this and touching this and touching that and with the gloved hands. That's when cross-contamination happens. But if you're more comfortable wearing gloves, uh, then by all means, wear gloves. But really, if you wash your surfaces down, wash your hands, you'll be fine. May I go back to what I was doing now? Yes. OK. So someone mentioned earlier about chicken thighs, boneless versus chicken breasts. So I'm going to pull out, I have some chicken cutlets which are, of course, made from boneless, skinless chicken breasts. And you can buy these pre-sliced into cutlets real thin. You can cut them yourselves. You can buy them pre-breaded. Um, I did not. I cut them down myself and then breaded them. But uh, I love the boneless, skinless breasts because they're so versatile, like most chicken. But if you're careful and don't overcook them, uh, they're just delicious and very healthy for you. Maybe not the way I'm about to cook them, but... So I'm just going to make some chicken cutlets. And now, with our new studio, we have a new camera angle yes. over there. Yes, yes. Yay, camera's in the ceiling. Yep, so let's see where that oil is since it stopped smoking with my little... Oh, that is a good view. Thermo right. pan. Very happy with that. Good. With that. Yep. Oh, we're good. We're good. So we're just going to start pan frying these. What are we making? Well, you know, I was going to make good old chicken parm, which I may make for us, for us for dinner tonight. But I think I'm just going to fry these up, maybe um, give them a little squeeze of lemon. And that's that. All right, Ooh, so let's turn really the like heat back on. <laughs> We're going to have to duplicate this on the other side now. Okay. I'm going to turn that low. And we're just going to let these kind of fry and sizzle. What was but, the temperature of your oil? Uh, it, was, I, it was like 350 something when I pulled it out. So hold on. Doo, doo, doo. What did you want it to be? Let's put it that way. Um, 325 to 350. Of course, it's cooled down now because I put cold chicken in it. But it's coming right back up into the 300s. So. Hank brings up a good point about the gloves. Okay. They're only going to be good if you change them. Yes, you are. Exactly. Absolutely. Yep. And a lot of people don't do that. And that's like I love people seeing like during the pandemic at the store, they're wearing gloves, but they're touching everything. That You touch something, then you go 
how to change them. And... Yep. Yes, you're quite, quite correct, Hank. So what would we do with these? What could you do, do with these? Any type of chicken cutlet, cutlets, uh, and my teeth aren't even coming out. Hey, hey, I resemble that <laughs> remark. And you know, any type of cutlet like this, you could dredge it in flour, you can make chicken franchise. Yeah, really dark one there. Oh, uh, I put one. that in first here, and it, it's just really, I'm going home, I'm going back to camp. You're mean today. I'm loving this new camera shot. We're gonna have anyway, to do this on wow. the other side now. I, I, oh, well, maybe I'll be able to talk and do this live stream. Um, anyway, what can you do with these cutlets? You could, even these just bread it in breadcrumbs. They're fine on their own. You could turn it into chicken parm. You could uh, just do Parmesan cheese on it and lemon or just some lemon. Serve them with a salad. Snack them like they are. So I know what we could do with that. What? We've got jarred vodka sauce. Upstairs. Right. So we could um, put that in and some nice slices of Parmesan right. and I, melt it in the oven. Uh, right. I couldn't do that on camera because we don't have an oven down here. Another thing that makes it nice and light, fry it like that. A couple spoonfuls of bruschetta and a balsamic glaze. Yep. Nice, crispy, light, yep. good hot day meal. Yep. You can top them with anything. Let's just check. Mm -hmm. Not quite there, but I don't want the... Oh, there we go. Yeah. Carry over, we'll finish. Carry over cooking, we'll finish them. These are kind of cut thin, so... Oh, someone watches your basic but skills. I just started breaking down my own chicken, thanks to your video. But what do you do with the neck, livers, gizzards, etc.? Aha, that's a very good question. I saved them all. And the bones, the necks and things, in that one, in one container. Just right, like the back that I cut out of the chicken, that will go into chicken stock. The other parts, what people call the offal, which sounds like awful, the gizzards, the lizard liver, the heart, etc. I save that for gravies when I'm gonna make chicken gravy or turkey gravy at, at Thanksgiving. Um, that's where all that flavor comes, you know, giblet gravy. But they're wonderful even for putting into sauces and soups and even if you don't eat them, they add a lot of flavor. And we love our chicken livers. We do love our chicken livers. All right, this is coming back up to temp very nicely. Let's keep frying. All right, carefully. Always lay away from you. When you're putting things in the hot oil, away from you. Otherwise, you could drop it and it'll splash up on you. And try not to crowd your pan. He says as he crowds the pan. And... Mm -hmm. So yeah, I was going to do chicken parm and then I thought, well. Oh, from Pamela, I love chicken parm. I'm tired of the same old way. How about a new way to make it? So I'm glad you asked that because I have this crazy idea in my head and I'm, I'm gonna enlist the help of my grill master son over there, Kevin. I wanna make a chicken parm butter kebab. I want to do it on the grill. So I have to figure out the cheese. I, I think regular mozzarella would melt and stick and burn and fall off and, and ruin everything. But there's got to be a cheese out there uh, that you can grill. I know there are cheeses you can grill. And I don't remember the names. I want to say halloumi, but that might not be right. Uh, so that's the missing element. But yeah, grilled chicken, grilled tomatoes, some cheese. How wonderful. Yes, I figured out how to do that. What if you made the kebab and put a layer of shredded cheese around it, then wrapped it in foil, and then turn the kebab on the grill on the foil, and then take it off? Possibly, but I'm going for the grill marks, but that's a good idea. I was actually thinking do all that, grill it, but then sprinkle the cheese on at like the you end. pasta at serving. Right, and on that crossed my mind too, but I'm, I have this vision of a grilled grill marks on the cheese and that smokiness from you know from the being on the grill yeah but you know that's what i like to do so chicken parm what else can i do with chicken parm can i turn it into a soup or a salad or a kebab 
From AJ, I'm famous for my chicken cacciatore. That's nice. Again, send me a recipe. We did a version of chicken cacciatore not too long ago. A Roman version, and it doesn't have tomatoes, and it's all made of white wine, and it was delicious. <laughs> Here's your pet peeve coming up. Oh, all right, hold on. What? Ted, how can anyone eat those Chick-fil-A sandwiches with absolutely no flavor? Okay, well, we're not going to talk about Chick-fil-A. Uh, I agree with you. <laughs> yeah, that they're not my go-to chicken place. For a number of reasons. Yeah. Let's give these a flip. Oops, hold on, let me get down to you. There you go. Oh, there we go. Sorry, I was doing something else. I don't see that. You're silly. Yep, we're getting there. Ooh. Wow, this one is going down. It's sitting here in boiling oil, and it's like, no, AM 107, 104, like, wow. Which so means... while we have your attention, if you're in chat, take a moment and hit that like button. And mm -hmm. before you leave, in the comments, leave us a note about what is your favorite chicken dish. And if we can get a whole bunch of them in there, then we'll see if we can make a recipe to match it. Yep, or send me the recipe. And, and you can do it. that mm -hmm. by going to there. Mm -hmm. You can send us an email at info let's celebrate TV, as he says with the hiccups. See, too much champagne. Mm. We'll be drinking a whole lot of champagne if you either win this contest or, <laughs> but, or, you know, or get Master Chef. Of course, the problem with Master Chef is you have to commit to 10 weeks. Yeah. How do you pay your bills and keep your job if you have to commit to 10 weeks? But we said, you know what? We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out if we get it. But even if I don't go any farther in either one of those contests, look what's happened from being an in favorite chef. Our channel's been blowing up. You know, we used to be maybe two, three, four hundred views a day. Now we're in the thousands of views every day. So I'll take it. Absolutely. Oh, Hank's got some ideas for grilling cheeses. Okay, halloumi, yeah. What is halloumi? Provolone. Oh, I hadn't thought of provolone. Okay, so panela. And I'm not... Is that a Greek cheese, that second one? Kifo Lortori? Yeah, why don't you Google that, dear? Yeah, I was thinking that halloumi might be similar enough to mozzarella, but I hadn't thought about provolone. That's a great Kefalotori idea. Kefalotori is a heart salty white cheese made from sheep's milk or goat's milk in Greece and yep. Cyprus. Okay. Chicken cutlets. And think of how many things you can do with chicken cutlets. Hold on, let me right? get down there. There we go. There we go. So as, I think as I, much I, as I, will... I would. Cringe to say that you could just pour jarred tomato sauce on the top and mm -hmm. throw some cheese on it and tell them it's your grandmother's favorite. And Bombs your uncle, know. you've got, you know, the Italian American chicken parm, which I kind of feel. Okay, Jolene says, I like chicken, but even the thought of chicken livers grosses me out. <laughs> And, you know, that's unfortunate because uh, you're missing out. And I thought about doing chicken livers today, and then I thought, someone's going to get upset. And that's going to cause a whole drama that, although it might be funny in hindsight, uh, probably not worth it. It's funny because we do chicken livers all the time at our buffets when we do parties. Mm -hmm. It's the first thing to go. Yeah, I know. When we mix it with sour cream. Actually, we have an episode on that. We did that. We do, and I think it's an older it's one. It's an older style episode, so I maybe it's time so, to redo to them. redo it, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, unless we redid it and we've forgotten, because that never happens. Oh, well. So as a byproduct of us being really busy, our episodes haven't been getting out on Tuesday nights. So they've been getting out on Wednesday mornings. Mm -hmm. Well, for whatever reason, YouTube likes Wednesday mornings better, and all the ones that we put out on Wednesday mornings are around 9 o'clock, 
have gotten double the amount in the first few hours and, and that they then, would ever get on Tuesdays. Then our Friday episodes have been coming out, and we have some recorded, but someone keeps forgetting to edit them. And all of a sudden, it, it's Friday or Saturday morning. I'm like, did the episode go out last night? What episode? Oh, darn. I forgot. That's my bear. All right, so here's... Well, some... I get a pass on live stream weekends now. Okay, Come on. I, I, I agree. And, and you've had some stuff going on lately. I so. have. You'll get a pass this week. Um, so we're getting, all of a sudden, we're getting towards the end, aren't we? It's almost 20 after. Hold wow. on, we got a lot more questions. Though. All right, let's do them. Bring them. Isabel, do you ever make chicken and dumplings or chicken pot pie? Um, occasionally I do. Chicken pot pie or chicken pie is something I, I'm trying to uh, develop now to have come out in the fall or winter because it's more of a warming. And I say they're chicken and dumplings. Uh, but I want to do a chicken pot pie because I need to perfect my pie crust. I'm trying to wean myself off the store-bought pie crusts um, and make learn really c conquer making my own. And, and what makes any type of pie is but the crust. Yes, we've seen that. I know that. I've, but oh, okay. there are new people in. So. Oh, there's new people? So how many are we up to? Uh, we have uh, 10 okay. on YouTube and we have... 13 on Facebook. All right. Well, welcome all the new people. So we have not seen some of our regulars like Phil and Dixie. I was hoping they'd watch this because, you know, Phil Knapp, if you're watching, this is for you. And sorry, Dixie, but uh, I know you cluck your way through life. But Yeah, that is cluck, my favorite -L -U -C -K, line. Cluck your way through life. But, um, yeah, we haven't seen them for a while. There's a few other people. Oh, they were on last thing. week. They were? Well, yeah, we chided them, and they jumped and said, we're here. Um, I remember that. Let me see what's happening with our Facebook group list. Mm -hmm. Oh. So it seemed it would appear that I could have had time to make a chicken salad if I... Oh, well. Next mm. time. The front camera or I'm the... Gives you a keystone effect on the back wall. Because the front camera hasn't changed. So okay. that camera hasn't changed... This camera is a new lens. No, but I see, if you go back to, I see what he's talking about. Oh, I yeah. can see looking at the lines of the pictures on the walls that they're going like this. Yeah, like well, that's always going to be that way. And so actually, that's always been that way. You don't see that in production because we zoom in more. And that's because the camera is angled down slightly since it's over the TV. That's that one over there. No, the front one. Yeah, that's the front one. That's the front one. Behind the light is the front one? On the TV. Oh. That oh. one. Oh, yeah. There's a camera right in front of me. <laughs> I had a late night last night. I won't yeah, lie. That one hasn't changed. Yeah, the parallax in the back is caused by the small angle. You don't see that because we edited it out. <laughs> we are here, and I have a fool hanging over my shoulder thinking this live stream is just for him. <laughs> Please, never again. <laughs> Could be worse. We could rerun the how to flip stuff in a pan yeah. episode. That's okay, Dixie. As we're doing through, so this, I, I, we should have said this earlier. You know, the whole title of the live stream is What's for Dinner? Chicken. So this is the first of a new series of live streams. And it won't be every single time, maybe every other time, but the question will be asked What's for dinner? What's for lunch? What's for breakfast? What's grilling? What's whatever? What's for cocktail? And, hour? Right. So, you know, it could be What's for dinner? Meatloaf. How about that? I could make, you know, 17 different types of meatloaf and FedEx them to you, of course. Yeah, it's lost <laughs> with the last batch. We could just deliver yeah. it, though, you know. It's I know, not that it's, far. I know. It's not like we, we don't go up there every week. Um, and, yes, for all of you new people, Dixie and, and her husband are very dear friends of ours, and, and uh, uh, they are former neighbors from where we uh, up in New York. So, yeah. So when I say, like, oh, I'm going to come and cook for you, how often do you really have chicken? Oh, gosh. At least once a week, sometimes more, sometimes two or three times, right, dear? Because it's like, what do you do? We do eat a chickens? lot of chicken. Yeah. We, we eat far more chicken thighs Well, because and we do so much with them. And even though the rage is boneless, skinless, we actually prefer it with the bone on. Right. First, it's, you know... If you think about it, it's the biggest chicken wings you could ever have. 
but like the best, these. But the best bet eyes. is they're really, really tasty. Yeah. So six bucks for this, and this is you see here. Yeah. Anyway, the one thing I we have it so often, as Dixie well knows, uh, it's such yes, but it is always chicken. <laughs> That's true. That's true. But you know, you know, okay, so you could have chicken parm tonight, and then you could do a chicken and vegetable stir fry tomorrow, and it's a totally different experience. So yeah, if you're eating every day, it would be a little, ugh. but if you can break it up, maybe have it twice a week, maybe even three times, you know. The, the trick is to not fall into the trap of, I always do fried chicken, I always do these same three things. You know, mix it up. Chicken is so versatile, it's a blank canvas. And you can have it multiple nights and have a different experience, a different Well, what meal. we could do, especially with someone asking about deep fried chicken, we should do a deep fried versus pan fried versus oven uh, fried. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. and they, no, all, you're not, they uh, all look exactly the same to the on the chicken itself. And, and I'm going to tell you right now, you're not going to go buy me an air fryer for that episode. I am not buying an air fryer. I'll argue my deep fryer. No, thanks. I need a deep fryer. I want a deep fryer, but I don't want an air fryer. No air fryer. We don't need that. It's called. A, I, I love the people that have bought an air fryer oh. thinking it's something brand new. It's a mini convection oven. Well, right, but it's mini, it's hotter, whatever, and people love them. It's just not, I don't, you know, like you bought me the Instapot, which uh, can do some great things, but nothing that I can't do with my stove. The difference is it will do it faster. Um, Dawn, what is your favorite piece or cut of chicken? Well, we really enjoy chicken thighs. Uh, Phil's other favorite, and when I, I make this for him when he has had a bad day maybe, or I just sense like he needs some comfort food, his is the split chicken breast, which is the breast that's still on the bone and has the skin full of flavor. And they're super easy because you just whack them in the oven or on the grill, they cook away, no fuss, they're easy. But again, something you can do a lot with. And they're pretty affordable, I think, anyway. Some people we know may disagree. Anyway. Um, Oops, wrong button. Oh, yes, I love Try the Butterfly House. There we go. What is your favorite way to cook chicken? That's a good question. I'm not sure how to answer that. I think we do more of the uh, pan fried finished in the oven. Yeah, like like sear them in the cast iron and yep. pop them in the oven. You're right. So it's a ro it's a roasted via. Right. Hold on, let me give it here. It's roasted. We spatchcock it. We did put it in a 500 degree. Right. Um, we take a cast iron pan, put it in the oven at 500 degrees. Well, what I'm doing, no, that's for a whole chicken. That's not spatchcock. That was the whole thing because yeah. we did that episode. But I do. Excuse me. When I do a whole chicken, I will spatchcock it more often than not. You're right. Um, but yeah, no, my favorite is, is really just roasting in the oven. It's the easiest thing to do. Um, and of course, I have a little addiction to garlic, so it's always very heavily garlic But you've seen a lot of my chicken episodes, our chicken episode, chicken scarparillo, Roman chicken, marry me chicken, all those great things, chicken with pesto. So. Oh, okay. What? Evidently, my button broke again, but we just got oh. one that says you should do a wings episode. Oh, yeah. I'll be here for that. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's another one. Again, my button's broken. I bet you can't make a cocktail with chicken. Actually, you would lose that bet. <laughs> you would. There is a new trend. They're called, instead of a, a cocktail, a stock tail. So they use like chicken broth, beef broth, vegetable, whatever, and sometimes even the bone broths are even more intense. And it sounds um, a little terrifying, and yet, I think because I'm a bit of a masochist, I want to try one. Maybe we'll do that after filming. Kevin, you up for that? I'm in. A chicken broth cocktail? I'm in. Yeah. What time is the kids getting home? Tomorrow. Home tomorrow. Oh. Well, we have a nice big plate of fried chicken. We do. Mm hmm So, the clock is... Ticking down. Shall we talk about what's coming up next? And what we're doing. Yeah, what it's 424, doing. so mm -hmm. yes. So next for LCTV is, uh, I already, we were talking about the chicken parm kebab. Uh, that's, I really want to do that before the end of summer. So 
I, I will need my grill master for that too. I'm putting you on notice. We may have to do it like we'll record it, but then we'll do it on a live stream and uh, we we'll have to say, set up grill cam again. Yeah, because people have asked for that, the yeah. grill cam. We've had a number of people. We had a lot, a lot of people asking us technically how we did that. Uh-huh, yep. Uh, Friday, hopefully, as he looks at the husband, editor, director, uh, we have a cocktail episode coming out. It's Adventures in Drum it's Bowie. It's edited. It's just not finished. Yes. So we are having, or we did have, a little adventure with Drum Bowie, and we are introducing a couple new cocktails. Uh, one is the classic Rusty Nail, uh, and that's one. And the other is, is called the... Lemon... Lemon Meadow. Lemon Meadow. Lemon Meadow. It's adult and lemonade, basically. It is, and it's delicious. And I was never a big John Bowie fan until uh, okay. someone asked me up at camp. Someone asked me to make them a rusty nail, and I said, I don't know how many John Bowie. So I came home, and I bought a bottle, and I went, ooh, maybe I was wrong about this. I always thought it was an old man drink. Of course, I am an old man now. So. It's whiskey and honey, basically. Well, yeah, it, it, it's a little more than that, but anyway. So we have that coming up, of course, our live streams with this new series that we're doing. And um, we still have to decide what we're filming for Tuesday night, dear, don't we? Nor do we decide what the next live stream is going to be, so stay tuned for that. All right, so now I'm going to bring this one up and I'm going to answer it. Okay. Um, so Hankings asked, how did my surgery go? Um... Well, for those who are not aware, I've been having very, very strong leg pains. Um, and about a month ago, I had ultrasound on my legs, and they detected a blockage. So I, three weeks ago now, or two and a half weeks two ago? Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, I went for an angiogram, where that's where you lay on the table, and they run a... Uh, angioplasty. Well, angioplasty is when they open it up, but they first... Angiogram is when it goes in, they thread it through your legs. It's kind of cool because in the seal and you have a TV, you can kind of watch it. So the good news, the bad news is they couldn't find any blockages. Yeah. All their other scans were like, oh, this one's 90% blocked, this one's 85% yep. blocked, so and here were they are. So and... convinced because the ultrasound said I have a blockage that they called in a second surgeon, says, please wait. And they pulled it out and they put another one in and the second surgeon fished around there for another hour and said, I can't see a blockage either. Meanwhile, I'm very loopy on very happy drugs to not feel the pain. In recovery, the doctor comes over and says, well, the good news is you have no blockage. The bad news is we don't know now why you're leg pain. We're going to give you drugs. And then the drugs have their own right. icky side effects, which so we won't have, share with you, but it, my poor bear has been a little miserable. So, yeah. And so unfortunately, I stayed home this weekend and... Yeah. Husband was unattended at camp by himself. That's another story. Look, I had a dinner party to throw, so, you know, I couldn't cancel. There's social obligations. Well, at cocktail um, hour with me out at the bar. I will point out that you... It took three people took to three replace people you. to do yes, what I dear, do by myself. And everyone said that. That's why they're every, people were very upset you weren't at camp. That's because they missed their free cocktail. No, even people... Yeah. Yeah, they missed the free cocktail. No, no, dear. Everyone was very concerned about you, even Adora. Anyway, it looks like we're about to wrap up. So thank you, Hank. Yeah, no, the ultimate thing is, yes, he's still having leg pain, but he's going to be fine. Maybe. Um, he has to still follow up with our primary and his cardiologist and all the other fun stuff, but we are figuring it out as we go along. Yeah, so. really the only side effect at the moment is I can't do long drives because... My legs need to be out, so sticking on an accelerator, going to work is no big deal. It's half an hour. But like the three-hour ride, three three ride to camp is just crippling so, me right now. Which means next week while I'm driving to camp, he'll be stretched out in the back seat of my truck like the Queen of Sheba with his legs up and pillows and, and you know. You say that like it's a problem. Eating bonbons. Dear, it's not a problem. It's like Pete Fest in reverse. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I think we're about wrapped up for winter, winter chicken, not even winter, winter chicken dinner. What's for dinner? Chicken dinner. And um, so we should be in chat for a few more minutes. Thank you all for joining us. Keep voting for me, please, starting tomorrow. 
uh, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time is when voting opens. You'll know if you try, it won't let you vote, so keep trying and it'll let you vote again. Uh, so thank you all for your support in that and for watching our show. And we'll be in chat for a few minutes. Have a good day. Cheers. I'm working on the Hollywood.